There we go. Now I welcome those of you who are on Zoom or Facebook. Sorry, I still have myself muted. I'm happy to have all of you here with us worshiping on this rather rainy Mother's Day. Um, but I'm glad that you guys could come out or you could join us um, from your homes. And uh, I do want to wish all of those mothers among us a happy Mother's Day. And we will remember you, of course, in our prayers today. Um, the only other announcement I have is I just wanted to let you know with a few weeks notice, uh, Pastor Matt and myself and the kids will be on vacation on May 30th. That's the last Sunday this month. Um, we're still working out the details of how exactly worship will happen um, because we hate to invite somebody else here and make them learn all of the computer stuff. Um, but, we're, but we will be able to still have worship here in person and then some form of online worship as well. Um, and we'll let you know how as the Sundays uh, move along. But we will be on vacation that final Sunday in May. Uh, are there any other announcements or updates for our prayer list this morning? All right, uh, seeing none and seeing no one online um, offering, uh, wanting to say anything, we will turn it over to our prelude with Kathy. Oh, 
of the resurrection, but are caught in the worries of the world. We confess that we do not always live in the spirit of new life, but remain discontent, grumbling, and anxious. Forgive us for not sharing in the good news. Forgive us when we find it more comfortable to worry and complain than to risk the joy and encouragement of new life in Christ. Call us back to your ways, O God, to seek hope and reconciliation, restoration and peace. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Christ is risen. The stone is rolled away, the tomb found empty. We see Christ in every helping hand, in every heartfelt gift, in every choice to restore life in this world, we are called to this new life, a life of forgiveness and reconciliation. You are forgiven. Accept your forgiveness and know that God loves you and desires great joy for your life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading today comes from Acts 10, verses 44 through 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. short life would be what would you do what would they say when God called you home what would they engrave once you were gone I hope they would see what I'd done in my life who I cared 
All right, the psalm for today is Psalm 98, and we'll read responsibly by whole verse. Sing a new song to the Lord, who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord, who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Equity. The second reading comes from 1 John 5, through 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. 
And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Here ends the second reading. I invite our young people forward. So I'm still going to stand back here, okay? But, but hopefully you can uh, see pretty well my, my big dry erase board, right? Um, so I'm going to start this morning with a question. Do either of you know what a crossword puzzle is? Have you ever seen something called a crossword puzzle? No. No? Well, I happen to really love them. What they are is they're little, like, so they, I'll kind of draw Okay, so they kind of look like this. They have some blanks that go down and some blanks that go across. And then they give me little clues. And from the clues, I have to fill in what the words are. So if the clue was something like um, a building where horses may live, what might you put? Farm. Farm, right? That would, that would be a good one. All right, so we'll do barn. Now, once in a while, they kind of like to be sneaky, and they like to fill in words that give them certain vowels or that kind of stuff. So I've discovered they do this, this particular trick a lot. So if I were to say to you, where would you find a boat on the water? Right? Or what, what water might you find a boat on? Right, maybe a lake. Hang on, I'm gonna, because I gotta make this work now. Don't know. <laughs> Just kidding, I gotta have a second, okay. Right, maybe a lake. So I might say lake. Oh, but a lake doesn't end with the letter A. How about ocean? Does ocean end with A? No. Nope. And so sometimes I might say, oh, the C. C ends with an A, but it's four letters. And C is only three letters, right? S-E-A. Well, they like to do this little trick. I'm going to show you. They put an A in front of a word, right? So the boat is a C, right? Which seems kind of funny. And they use this for a lot of words. So it might say what you do at night or where you are at night. And it's a bed, right? And that's, that's a way that you can make words, but they, it's kind of tricky. Right, they just throw an A in front of things. So it might be like, um, I'm going to go to somebody's house who has a braid. Ah, you're going a uh, Collins, right? That would be kind of silly how they do that, but they like to just kind of throw this A on. Well, I realized in today's gospel, they do that with a word in the gospel today. And I'm gonna write the word here, and the word is, uh, right? Because you gotta have uh. Abide. That's a word in today's gospel. Abide. Have you ever heard that word before? No, pretty new word, right? Well, um, you might at some point hear somebody use the word bide, and they use it with, with time. I'm biding my time. Right? I'm 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 waiting. I'm, it's, 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 another, it's another good word for waiting, right? So today in the gospel, we are to abide with Jesus. How do we wait time with Jesus? That's kind of a weird thought, isn't it? Abide, wait time with Jesus? Well, he says that we are to abide in his love. So let me ask you, have you ever known, like let's say, I know you guys have, you have some fun times playing with your cousins. 
How does it feel when you're waiting for your cousins to arrive? Right? You know they're coming, but they're not there yet. Boring. Boring. Right? And long. Time goes really slow, right? And you get really excited, but you're, just, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. That is biting. That's that what it means to bide, right? That you're waiting for that to happen. How do you feel when your cousins show up? Excited, Excited right? And you try to make the most of every single minute you have together, right? You're going to play, and you're going to, you know, uh, maybe, maybe Aria wants to play uh, house, and Griffin wants to play cars, and um, Cora wants to, I don't know, play school, and you want to play blocks, or even, right? So you try to fit it all in and enjoy every moment together. And that's what the gospel is telling us today, is that, that excitement, that time where we try to do everything we can, that's what we're to do with Jesus. We are to spend all of the time that we can with him, knowing we are loved knowing that, that we have this time to be with him and that he loves us and he holds us close. And he tells us that, that's, that he actually commands us today, right? It's like a pretty big, serious thing. He commands us to be with him and to know that we are loved. So today you kind of got a school lesson. Sorry, you got an English lesson. But it's so important when we hear that word to know what it means to abide with Jesus. And now we know it means to spend time and to be loved by him. So let's have a prayer. God, sometimes we bide our time. We wait, hoping for something different or feeling bored or waiting to experience something new. But in you, we always abide. We are always spending time with you. You are always loving us always caring for us. We thank you that we never have to wait on you. You just are there. Thank you for this gift. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up, ladies. I invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel, which the holy gospel for today is according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you may ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Oh, I'm getting my dry erase board back out. Because this morning, we're going to start off the sermon with a little crowd participation. It's okay, hopefully it's not too intimidating. All I'm gonna ask of you is that I want you to give me the title of any song you can think of that has the word love in it. So for instance, I'll start you off with an easy one. We've got the Beatles, 
all you need is love. Right? So, all right, so let me hear it. Some song titles with the word love in them. Love me do. Love me do. All right, what did I hear? Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. You betcha. We heard that one already this morning, didn't we? Love me tender. Love me tender. Oh, Elvis. I love rock and roll. I love rock and roll. Ho, ho, ho. Put another dime in the jukebox, baby. <laughs> All you need is love. Yep. Beatles have a lot. I also uh, threw down She Loves You, right? She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loved the one I sang. Huh? The she song. loved. There you go. It's amazing, you know they're in there, don't you? Any others you can think of right now? Love American style. Love American style. Oh. I did not have that one on my list, but I had love as a many splendored thing. Yeah. Right? Remember that one? The love boat. The, the love boat. Oh. Right? This could go on. Okay, so if you have more. Note them down, you tell me later. I'm going to share just a little, I worked out a little bit of a list this week, and I'll tell you a few other ones that I had. Was um, Love is a Battlefield for us 80s child children, right? Um, uh, Garth Brooks, To Feel My Love. Um, love Hurts. Love Hurts. Right? R.E.M., this one goes out to the one I love. Uh, Do You Love Me Now That I Can Dance? Right? In the Name of Love. Um, I can't believe no one gave, brought this one out. And I will always love you. Right? I, oh, oh, that one lives in my brain. Right? Or my endless love. Right? Um, Huey Lewis, The Power of Love. And one of my personal favorites, B-52, The Love Shack. Right? And then you get to the church. You've got Jesus Loves Me. Jesus Loves the Little Children. We had camp ones, uh, they'll know we are Christians by our love. And then our um, hymn of the day today is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Right, we could go on and on. And if I asked you to come up with songs that don't even have the word love in the title, but mention love, we could go on for forever. And that would be the case if I asked about movies or books, or poetry, about every other form of expression. Love is a major theme. We spend a lot of time trying to define, or explain, or model, or live love. We have arguments over whether love is an emotion, or an action. Is it a noun, or a verb? But do we actually understand love? Why or how we love, who we love, why we have trouble loving, and what in the world Jesus is actually commanding of us today? That's always a struggle for me when we get to these verses in John in the lectionary. Jesus is commanding us to love as he has loved us. Now, I am both very good and very bad at following orders. For instance, if the doctor tells me I must do something, I am all about it. I will follow her commands for the sake of my health. However, when someone tells me what the Bible says about women in positions of leadership, well, I don't recognize their authority to command me to stop preaching. Good luck on that. So you would think that when I instantly recognize Jesus's authority and want to follow his commands without hesitation, this would be easy to love. But I find myself arguing time and again what it means to love others and especially what it means to love others as Jesus has loved me. 
From the very first verse of today's gospel, I find a struggle. After all, how has the Father loved Jesus? I mean, if you were to think about it, the Father has sent his Son as a sacrifice. A weakened human. A person who is going to be mistrusted, misunderstood, threatened, hunted, beaten, and killed. How is that love? But that is what Jesus calls it. And Jesus tells us that he loves us that way as well. Loves the disciples to evangelism, yes, but also to martyrdom, to leaving their friends and their families and the only life they had ever known. And yet every one of them would call that love. And I'm sorry, but let's face it, if Jesus had actually told the disciples everything they needed to know, would we be sitting here 2,000 years later with umpteen denominations, so many questions and struggles of our own? I'm not sure. This love that Jesus is commanding seems more than just a little impossible. And frankly, pushes me towards wanting to push back and saying you are asking the unreasonable. How about we just stick with love we can handle and try being nice to everyone else? Are there ways and places you struggle with loving? Can you define for me the difference between loving and liking? Or perhaps my least favorite idea of love, can we ever separate emotion from action? That wonderful phrase, love the person, hate the action. Love the sinner, hate the sin. I would answer yes to the struggle. There are always places I struggle with loving, but I'd like to say no to everything else. As much as I would love to say that I can love people I don't like and don't agree with, I'm not sure I always mean it. After all, have you ever thought or said to someone that you didn't want to interact with this other person, but you'd save them if they ever needed it and were hurt? What an easy way to love. You never really have to show that. You just speak it, right? Because how often do we really come across our enemies in need of us? When they are hurting, they certainly wouldn't reach out to us unless there wasn't another option. And we certainly wouldn't reach out to them just on a regular basis to see if we could help. So in that regard, love is very cheap because it costs us nothing to say the words, especially when we never have to put them to the test. And in the comfort of a worship space, we can pray for all people. We can speak love for all. We can even mean it with all of our hearts. But outside the doors, we know how we feel about those people whoever they may be for us. Love in that regard, as Rich Mullins once said in the song, is about as useful as a screen door on a submarine. What's the point if we can say it one place and not another? So what do we do with a command, a command to love as we have been loved by the Son of God? Well, let's start with how we've been loved by the Son of God. I used to say that Jesus loved us to death, right? Because it's an unusual phrase we use with our loved ones. I love you to death. That means so much, right? I love you so much, at least while we're both alive. And I thought it was funny and meaningful to say that of Jesus because he loves us so much. But he also died for us, so he loves us to death. And that's true. But over the years, I've come to realize that death 
was really the least of what Jesus had a say in. And instead, he loved us to life. He loved us in ways that no one had or could. He loved the parts of us that others judged and condemned. He loved the parts of us that needed to be knocked down a peg or two and reminded we were not God. He loved the parts of us that felt distant and afraid and the parts of us that clung to him as like the lifeline that he was. He loved all, even as people tortured him and misunderstood and abused and mistreated him and killed him, he loved without fear of judgment or revenge. I don't think I can love like that. Do you think you can love like that? So where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us in that very first verse of today's gospel again. Abide in my love. It leaves us abiding in Jesus' love. Abiding, as I mentioned to the kids, means to experience the time. And in this case, to experience the time in God's pure love. We are commanded to love, yes, and commanded to love in ways that make us uncomfortable and challenge us to grow and to change, and we will fail at it. We will exclude people from love that they need, and we will justify it by saying and seeing them as unworthy or even outside of God's love. And we will fail to love ourselves as well. And we'll be wrong in that. But by abiding in the love of Christ, we will also be able to try again. And we will be shown what true love, what powerful love, what honest to goodness love looks like and feels like. And to abide in that, to know the grace and the embrace of that kind of love, well, it helps us to want to share it with others because everyone deserves and needs to feel that kind of honest to goodness love. The love God has for all his people. A love of sacrifice, willing to give up everything, including his own son, so that we all remain rooted together. That is the love we abide in. That is love that sings its own song, that doesn't need us to define it or refine it. That is love that simply is. And that is the love that is given to us. Amen.
of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer us in steadfast love. Creating God, the earth praises you. The seas roar and the hills sing for joy. Fill the earth with your love so that by their song, all creatures of land and sky and sea Burrowing and soaring, make call with us to join them in their praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Faithful Savior, you conquer the world not with weapons but with undying love. Plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit so that the peoples of the world may live in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Caring healer, you forget no one and accompany the lonely. Be present with those who are sick or suffering, especially Dixie, Lee, Marion, Julia, Marilyn, Don, Tim, Pat, Marcia, Doug, John, Pam, Heidi, Judy, Steve, Pat, Greg, Pastor Lisa, David, Joanne, Jeff, Barry, Mike, Buddy, Bonnie, and all those who rest in our hearts and our minds. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Gracious God, as a mother comforts her child, so you comfort us. Bless mothers and mothering people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers, mothers who grieve and those who grieve because they cannot be mothers, and those who have never known a loving mother. Gather us like a hen gathers her chicks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gentle Redeemer, all who die in you abide in your presence forever. We remember with thanksgiving all those who share your kingdom throughout their lives and now are in, their, in the kingdom with you. Keep us united with them in your lasting love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Father who created you sustain you. The Son who died for you live in you. And the Spirit who burns in you breathe in you anew. Amen.
Hope you all have a blessed week. Stay dry today. <laughs> and we'll see you again next Sunday.